see if we have any questions. Okay, so this is my palette that's in development. I'm super excited about it. Um, friends, if you have any questions as I'm painting, please, 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 please ask. Don't be shy. I am going to be using the Art for Joy Sake brush collection. If you're not familiar, this is the, the brush collection and it comes in a cute little pouch. We're almost sold out again on Amazon. Holy crow. And it's, uh, this is what it looks like. So six brushes. We'll see where I land. I'm not really sure like which brush I might um, be using tonight, but you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right. I feel like I'm missing one. What am I missing? I'm missing my cat's tongue. Where is she? Ah, ah. I need to move these paints over. They are on the wrong side of life here. I do not have these in a palette yet. I've been literally color mixing and color testing. Um, so I just have them like loose kind of butt up next to this palette, this tin, which is kind of funny. All right, let's make sure that we are where we need to be here. And our paper is where I need it to be so you can see. And for the love, where is my cat's tongue brush? Oh, good night. Who knows? Okay, let me grab a new one. Okay, so do another intro. If you're new here, I have not been live in ages. My name is Christy Rice. I'm obsessed with watercolor. I teach you how to make art for joy's sake. And I have designed these watercolor brushes. I use them almost exclusively and in March-ish of this coming um, year, 2022, that is, I will be releasing this watercolor palette set. Spraying down my colors. Um, when I started the live tonight, I showed you the most gorgeous pomegranates that I had in my kitchen. And so we're gonna do some pomegranates. I'm gonna be putting this up on YouTube. So I am filming it in a way that will accommodate YouTube as well as um, TikTok. All right, HB pencil is one of my go-tos. I also love me a good mechanical pencil. Zebra brand is my favorite. And I just did a loose circle. Um, the best thing when you're sketching out, you're heading out the door. They love me too. I love your brushes. They love me too. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, you'll have to watch the replay on um, on YouTube. So the best thing to do when you are trying to draw or even paint a little circle is just keep that hand loose. I am just sketching a little bit. I'm not going crazy here. I'm going to do like an inside. I'm doing this all from memory, friends. I don't have the pomegranate in front of me. I am just doing this all from my little memory who, who knows? what's going to happen. I just want to give myself a little guidance and direction. I'm holding my pencil extremely loosely because I don't want to get too fussy fuss with it. Like I'm already doing. Okay. I'm going to just go right in with this soft pink here and my three quarter inch wash brush. My water is not perfectly clean. Friends, something you need to know about me, again, if you're new here, um, is that I am the type of painter. I am not terribly precious. I'm telling you whether I do work for licensing, whether I do work for wedding invitations, in terms of my process, now not the finished result, but my process, I don't get overly precious about things uh, because it just slows me down emotionally and it stresses me out emotionally. So I went wet on dry, meaning my brush was wet, my paper was dry, and now my paper is damp 
So I'm able to go in, uh, my brush is damp, lightly loaded with some colors. I'm already bringing in some purples. Now I'm technically going wet on wet, but I like to refer to it more specifically as wet on damp. This is something I talk about in um, my newest book, Making Art for Joy's Sake. I make a distinction between wet on wet and wet on dry, and the somewhere in between of that is wet on damp. And I make that distinction because I truly believe the results of, of um, in your head of actually making a distinction and, and realizing that there's a wet on damp in your painting process gives you um, some incredible results. So when it's wet on damp, you get these gorgeous, um, lightly diffused effects like you can see here. I just adore. So I'm going in with just the very edge of my wash brush. And look at I can get right in there into the little top of this pomegranate. No problem. Hello. Hello, that pug Marco. Hello. Haha, <coughs> 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 no chill. I struggle with being loose with drawing or painting in life. Yeah, I know. Well, it comes with time. Um, I just picked up a little bit of red, purple, and the blue. They're right in a row here on my brush and I'm just going along the edge and just sweeping around as I go. I like painting directionally. I like adding brush strokes at times when my shape needs to be really defined and really strong and obviously a pomegranate um, is a very defined shape um, in many ways. Um, so I love to make sure that my brush strokes follow suit um, and are also quite defined <clears throat> in terms of the direction in which I kind of carry the brush. All right. I'm grabbing my uh, quarter inch dagger. I feel the need right now, right away, to start adding in some very subtle hints because it's wet on wet. This is definitely wet on wet right now. Um, and you can, you'll be able to see the difference in how much this color starts to diffuse. I, I want, I'm craving that satisfaction of seeing some of these um, seeds up here. Hello from Australia, I love it. Love you too, hello. Rosa, hello, 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 friends. So glad you're here. So glad. I'm going to pull up a photo. Never feel like you can't do this when you're painting. I know I came on and I said, oh, oh my gosh, what is happening? Oh, I had a YouTube video going. Ha. <laughs> anyway, I come on here and I say, you know, I'm painting from memory, but I'm feeling right now like I want to see the inside of a pomegranate. So I'm going over to my computer. And I'm just doing a Google search. All right, perfect. Good, 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 good. All right. <coughs> um, because I just felt like I needed a little more um, direction. So I, I got it. There we go. But I was on the right track for sure. I don't mix a lot on the palette. Again, this is for our newbies here. If there are any, I like to load my brush with two or three colors at a time. Um, I know it freaks out a lot of folks because they're like, wait, wait, wait a minute. Aren't you contaminating things? Um, not as much as you think is my response. I'm gonna do a little bit of lifting. I'm adding clean-ish water right here pushing it around. This is my new palette that's in development and it is an ink based palette, which typically means, um, and in this case definitely means more saturated colors than traditional watercolor pigment based palettes. But it often means that you can't lift the color 
meaning that you can't kind of move the color around once you've laid it down on the page. And um, that the lifting is such an integral part of my process, it was important that my palette allowed for lifting. And as you can see, uh, my pigments most certainly allow for lifting. So good, good, good looking out. Love it, love it. All right, so I did a little lifting there. I am literally adding some texture. My flat wash brush, as this brush dries, the, the, um, the bristles separate a little bit. I am using that to my advantage to get some cool um, texture. Ooh, yeah, I'm, I'm loving life right now with that. Getting my brush cleaned again, and I'm continuing to just kind of get the pigment, the strong pigment, and you can see what I'm doing here. I'm scooping it up and I'm blotting and I'm pushing and blotting over and over. And look at that. I've cleared out that space. I'm going to let that dry now um, because I want that space to remain light and soft and, and highlighted. And if I painted into that space now, it would bleed and it would become what it was before I started um, do you have any reference books that you use or just online sources? Honestly, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I adore books. I have books all around me, but, um, I literally have my computer with two monitors to my left here and I always have an iPad around me. So more often than not, I'm heading to a Google search for photo references or I also love, I follow a lot of floral designers on Instagram and I will head there often for photo reference. Um, it's just so much more convenient, let's just face it. And I'm a book lover. I'm just adding a hint of a third pomegranate for composition's sake back here. Um, I love books, but I also love immediacy and convenience so yeah and we're gonna just do a hint of oh what do we call this on a pomegranate is it a cap what is that i don't know somebody knows what that's actually called please let me know um i also break a ton of rules friends just as i'm adding some shadows here i do not exclusively work from light to dark I often will throw in darks very quickly, very randomly in some ways um, because I feel like it, right? And I encourage you to do that. And my reason for that is because I firmly believe that you should paint in a way that keeps you motivated to continue. And if you're getting bored in your painting, what's going to happen? You are going to stop, right? And I don't want that. I don't want you to stop. Now, granted, I also am the person, and I'm making a little wavy edge here, because if you notice, pomegranates are never perfectly um, round. So I'm making a wavy edge decidedly here, and then I'm going in and cutting in so you can see some of the flesh, the outer flesh, the skin, excuse me, of this particular pomegranate, because that would naturally be what you see. But anyway, I um, I want you to paint in a way, I hope I didn't lose my train of thought, in a way that keeps you motivated to keep painting. But at the same time, I do like to also encourage you, if you only have five minutes to paint, then great. Use that five minutes and use it well. Um, I'm adding some blue here. It's wet on damp. I'm just stroking upwards to create a little bit of shadow. Look at this, look at what's happening. I am in love. I don't mind saying it. Something, friends, that I encourage also is to be kind to yourself. Don't be afraid to compliment yourself. I'm editing the shape here. I, I wasn't liking how this edge was looking. And I'm just dragging out some of the color. My brush is pretty dry right now. Look at that. And also, there's some little white specks that aren't perfectly filled with paint. <laughs> and so be it. It's okay. It's okay. Friends, hit me up. Hit me up uh, with your questions. I'm here for you. Um, you know, I have no idea what the part that part is called. And honestly, never. I never thought about it for, before either, Jennifer. Jennifer D8. I never thought about it. <laughs> 
until just now. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what that's called. Um, so anywho, I'm going to grab my half inch dagger and because I'm feeling very much like we need some greens starting to happen here. So I'm going to press, drag and lift as I get towards the pomegranates. I'm going to load up with a little bit of this peachy color, press, drag and lift right next door. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I can't handle it. Not cleaning my brush, not adding any water, but also not adding any pigment and press drag and lift. Let's see how much more paint we can get out of here. Press, drag, and lift. There is such beauty and grace in letting your paint run out, letting your brush run dry as you paint a particular element, friends. There is such beauty in that. So let that happen. That is going to, that letting your brush run out as you paint and not constantly reloading is going to give you quick and, um, very, very uh, um, authentic highs and lows, lights and darks, and texture that you don't have to fuss over. Okay, let's do this again. I want to show you. I'm going to load up with this gorgeous olivey green that's in my new brush set, or my brush set, hello, my new paint set, and a little bit of peach at the same time. And you can see here, colors are not terribly contaminated, nothing to worry about. And I'm gonna start with the tip of the leaf, press, drag, wiggle a little bit and lift. Go right next door, drag and lift. Let's let it run out. There's a lot more peach on my brush this time, that's okay. Something else you can do, friends, is start into that pomegranate a little bit and pull some of the color out. Pull some of the color out, press and drag and lift. And look at that. Now, I do feel like I want a little more green going on there, so I'm going to go ahead and add it. But, <coughs> excuse me, I feel like I'm choking. But just know that that opportunity to let your brush run out of color is just such a lovely, amazing opportunity and just use it. Let's add a little bit of um, evergreen, little pine suggestion. I'm loading this olive green and this teal and we're gonna just start it here and just bounce, change the angle of the brush, bounce, bounce, and look at that tri-color effect you're getting. I loaded two colors on the brush, but when they mix together, it essentially creates a third. Ah, oh, look at that, isn't that lovely? And it, it, it so it's kind of instant. Let's, let's continue, let's let that brush run out. I'm gonna go up here in between these two leaves. Bounce, change angle, bounce, Angle change, back and forth, back and forth. A couple extra bounces as you get towards the tip of your pine bow to create a little bit of a point. I'm gonna just tap a little bit of teal on there. Reloaded from my brush. Look at that, ah, oh, gorgeous. My paintings get flat quick because I don't leave white highlights, no contrast, yeah. Um, so use, you know, definitely be mindful of leaving the whites. <clears throat> but also, friends, use this little lovely trick that I mentioned here of letting your brush run out, and let the, letting the color run out as you paint areas because you're going to naturally get those white areas happening. Friends, I got to go get a drink. Bear with me. <clears throat> I don't want to be coughing through this whole thing. Um, Vermont Hiker or VT Hiker, I'm assuming that's Vermont, says, I can't wait for this palette. Those colors are lovely. Thank you. Jennifer, DA, I am loving your palette. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Can you open the tin? I will. As soon as I come back with my drink, bear with me. I will be right back, friends. Okay, I am back. Ooh, I'm also like roasting vegetables. Keep in mind that roasting sweet potatoes in my kitchen. So <clears throat> had to check on all that. Okay, 
I'm loving your palette. Oh yes, can I open the tin? So um, friends, I'm gonna open this tin. So this is my sample tin. And um, this was when I was considering doing a 24 color palette. I've now 100% decided on a 12 color for the first go round. Um, but it's just gonna be, it'll be this size. Hold on, I have a, an example, maybe. Where'd it go? Well, I had an example palette. Anyway, the the 12 count size is basically from here to here. That's how big it'll be. So just a little bit smaller. It's still gonna have all the lovely artwork. It's gonna be scaled down a little bit. Um, we're eliminating this flap because um, a lot of people don't know and don't use this interior because this lifts out. So we're eliminating this to make the palette a little more affordable, quite honestly. Um, so I'm excited about that. The interior tray is gonna be a copper, like a rose gold coppery color. Um, it's a little too pink right now, the first prototype, but that's what that looks like. All right, let me answer these questions. Thanks for the love, friends. The color in between the peach and the sap olive green. Oh, it is like a... Um, really beautiful uh, brown, but it's got so many other things going on besides just brown. There's reddish undertones and orange undertones. It's just gorgeous. And when you mix it with the blue here, um, it creates the most stunning indigo, which is why I chose it, so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, that pug Marco. Thank you. I want to make sure I didn't miss any questions. What kind of um, mother of dragons? Love it. What kind of paper do you recommend? Uh, right now, I will tell you this, friends. Um, if you, you know, if money's no object, which please, <laughs> who can say that? Um, uh, you know, Arches 600 GSM, by far, my absolute favorite. But these days, I don't want that brush. I want my flat wash brush. These days, because of the amount of paper I'm going through on a weekly basis, I love the Academy. It's 100% um, cotton, just lovely, lovely paper. And it is so daggone affordable. It's just amazing. So right now I'm painting on a 12 by 12. I did, look at that friends, I just drug that brush just a little bit and it's creating this cool like geometric thing that I'm not hating at all whatsoever. I'm gonna go do a little bit of, of it over here. Look at that, look at that, ooh yeah. Mm -hmm. Sing to yourself, whatever you gotta do that that makes you happy and, and makes you realize that you're doing a lovely job. I sing to myself and apparently sing to you also as I paint. Um, but yeah, love it. So, uh, Academy, so, 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 so good and so affordable. So this 12 by 12, I think was like $16 and there's 20 sheets and it's hundred percent cotton. I often paint front and back, especially when I'm just doing not just, but TikTok paintings where like I'm going through this stuff like water, like seriously, <coughs> I'll paint front and back. I'm sorry for the coughing, friends. I don't know what's going on, but I was sampling all of my vegetables. I was eating tons of pomegranate seeds. Um, so that's probably why I'm coughing. Um, anywho, I'm taking the cat's tongue and I'm going to get my pomegranate seed on here. And it is creating the most lovely stroke. Just a little press, slight drag, and I'm lifting up. And if I want it wider, I'm wiggling a little bit and lifting up. Oh yeah, just looking at the photos, some of the seeds, you know, we don't wanna make them all the same kind of direction because of how they're nestled together. I have my pinky is bracing my arm here and I am actually using my cat's tongue now to kind of actually create like, a, I'm coloring in like an imaginary circle is really what it feels like. A little bit of purple on there for some instant shadow and depth, adding a little bit water to, of water to my brush because it felt like it was dragging just a little bit. 
I keep this little section here, this little V, like an imaginary V here, kind of clear, so to speak. And I'm gonna go ahead and really, right away, start adding little notches of darkness in between these seeds to just give myself the satisfaction of that contrast, that loveliness that happens when the seed is kind of like shining and um, some of them are fading into the background and just look dark. See that? That is so satisfying. And, you know, traditional painting techniques would tell you, well, don't do that now. You've got to build up to that. Why? Why do we have to build up to that? In this style of painting, it's not realistic painting. I mean, it's realism in terms of, you know what I'm painting here. It's very clear I'm painting pomegranates. But this is a loose, modern watercolor style where we have the ability to take a lot more liberties and still be incredibly effective and convincing. Now, I will tell you something. I'm stopping myself because my inclination is just to go right over here and start doing the same thing that I did here, over here. But I'm noticing, gosh, I love how this looks, how things diffused and dried. And so I'm going to leave this section go for right now because I'm just blending out a little bit. But look, I love that. And it doesn't need me to fuss over it right now. It just doesn't. So realize that you can kind of get yourself, you can trap yourself sometimes if you're painting in a certain way and you're like, oh yeah, I love this. Oh, I love this effect. And then the next thing you know, you're painting that effect over your entire painting surface and it's starting to look quite, what, repetitive and a little just unnatural. And that is something that happens so easily when we are enjoying ourselves and then you're like, all of a sudden you're like, ah, what did I do? I don't like the way this looks. And it's usually because you've just, you know, too much of a good thing, right? So I just like to keep an eye on myself and make sure that I'm not getting into the too much of a good thing trap um, when I'm, especially when I'm adding detail. <coughs> Let me answer some questions. Um, it is cold press and cold press, the textury kind is absolutely my favorite. I will happily repeat the paper, but I will also show you what it looks like. Um, so I have this one. This is the Academy Rough, but it's really not all that rough. It's very similar to just arches, normal arches. And then this is Academy. Oh, I ripped off the, the cover so you can't see it. Hold on. I have another one. Here it is. So this is Academy Rough, harder to find for sure. I got the, the rough on AliExpress, but this is the Academy, the one I use the most often, just the standard cold press, um, easy, easy peasy to find on Amazon. But honestly, sometimes on AliExpress, you can get it even cheaper. So, so, so much cheaper. So keep an eye on that, but lovely. That is the Academy. <clears throat> You're welcome. Day one, Rochelle says, day one of rejuvenating her creativity. Oh my gosh, that makes me so happy. Um, Jennifer, I did have a good Christmas with my kiddos. Thank you so much. <clears throat> um, it actually was, uh, it was just such a lovely few days. Um, my family, not to get like too personal, but you know, my family's been going through a lot of turmoil over the last four or so years. Um, family drama. I won't say any more. Um, right now, friends, I am lifting. I'm taking some clean water on a few of these kind of dull looking um, seeds. I don't know why that happened, how it happened, but I'm lifting them right out and they're just giving me life. So clean water, lift, lift, blot. I'm good to go. So anyway, um, the the hard times that we've been having have just, you know, made certain holidays, especially Christmas, Christmas Eve, 
um, very difficult reminders um, for our family. I'm adding a little bit of fluorescent orange. Yes, yes, I am. I'm not kidding. Um, it's good times. Good times over here. Crazy Christie's on the loose. Um, so anyway, this year felt very redemptive um, in that regard, in that we have finally reestablished some new traditions um, after being left out of old traditions. And so this year felt very redemptive in that regard. Um, so thank you so much for asking. Uh, it, yeah, it was just absolutely lovely. Lovely, lovely. I don't like how these all look outlined from my lifting. So I'm going to just add some red over top and let that blend, blend, blend. All right, I'm going to go back over here. Oh, my iPad died. So I can't see your comments right now. So just let me plug her in and get that going again. Friends, if you are watching this on the YouTube um, replay, please, please, please join in the conversation. I do respond to all comments. And um, sometimes it takes me a while because sometimes I miss some. And uh, so you can be part of this. Uh, conversation as it's happening right now uh, by just commenting and leaving your questions and I will I will I'll get back to you for sure so I'm just going in now it's wet on dry because this had dried and adding another layer I want to definitely create some shadow right here at the base I'm lit literally going to the base of this pomegranate shape and I'm stroking up up and going around and you're probably like, wow, Christy, that's way too much blue. Hold your horses. Going right over top. Now it's wet on wet and going up with the red. Look at that. Gorgeous. Now I'm rinsing my brush and going back over top, just dabbing. I'm not over stroking this area. And um, ooh, look at that happy accident. I just kind of pushed the color out and it's spattered and ooh, love it. So there you go. It feels slightly muddy, so I'm gonna use some fluorescent magic and dab in a few dots of fluorescent to just lift the muddy spirits. <coughs> just a little light over here, so I'm gonna go ahead in. The thing that I adore about pomegranates, their skin is so interesting. It has so much going on. Um, and so you can just get super slap happy with texture. If you're a texture buff in your painting, pomegranates are for you. Oh, what did I do there? Oh, actually, I like that. Happy accident. I'm going to leave it. <clears throat> Let's see here. I, I'm feeling like some detail in my greens. So I'm going to grab my liner brush. Now, friends, let's talk about this. Let's look at my liner brush right now. It's not coming to a perfect point. It's dry and it looks like, wait, what's happening? Um, it, that's normal for any brush. You wet it and it comes back to beautiful, perfect shape. I get these questions a lot. Um, so I like to address them often when I'm painting. And I'm going right into this lovely kind of medium olive green. Make sure you've got a nice kind of half and half, 50% water, about 50% pigment on your brush. And then I'm going in with a light stroke to create some linear detail, getting a little bit more water back on there and coming out from that middle stroke. Ooh, wow, not enough water to create the veins of this leaf. Look at that. And again, you can let that brush run out. I'm gonna go to blue here. Mix with a little bit back and forth of the green, green and blue. Let that brush run out. Ooh, that's pretty. And see what happens. See what textures come to life. If you're feeling like some of the linear lines that you just put down are too strong, um, get clean, damp brush and just lightly whisper over top for a little blendy blend action. And there you go. <coughs> All right, I'm gonna stand up, see if I have any questions that need to be addressed. Oh, I can't read them, crud. I feel 
like now that I've stood up and this is a, just a friendly reminder it can be a good thing to stand up sometimes as you're painting like because I feel like I needed a little bit of texture so I was able to add that in but I don't know if I would have noticed it if I had stayed seated I'm using the half inch dagger now remember your pomegranate it's gonna not ever have this perfect circle sphere edge so use that to your advantage I love this area here it feels like a shine but not overt and also having stood up this area with this strong purple feels a little strange to me so I'm gonna go in and fix that I almost feel like I want to make this pomegranate back here quite a bit darker um, so it really goes back visually let's see if that works mm -hmm. kind of oh I like that I'm leaving that little white moment there just visually <coughs> that little little edge of white really helps um, keep things looking fresh and bright even in dark areas of the painting all right I'm gonna take a look at questions here my iPad just popped on with just enough charge now somebody asked about this brown so I'm gonna use a little bit of it right up here in this cap isn't that just the most lovely brown and you can't get the full effect of it because I'm putting it on top of like a pink area but it's just so, so doggone pretty why don't we make some okay let's see here where am I when will your palette where will the palette be available Amazon I feel like I missed some of your comments yes March ish on Amazon yes is there a way to get on a list when to get a notification when it does release yes make sure just go to christyrice.com or artforjoysake.com and uh, you'll see a place either place at christyrice.com you'll get a pop-up um, where you can uh, sign up to be on the email list our email list subscribers are the very very first to know so get on that list and um, yeah you'll be golden I'm also going to be looking for inner circle members um, where you'll get a special discount very early on when things launch. Um, so keep an eye out for that. I will make announcements here about that and other places. So just doing a little bit of press and drag, press and drag. Or a different type of leaf swag. Take some of that brown, dab it in. I'm standing now. Sometimes it can be lovely just to change your position when you're painting. So I am standing now. Oh, I had a little pink on my brush. That's fun. Other little lovely happy accident. Mm -hmm. Yes, brushes are on Amazon. <clears throat> Thank you, Jennifer, uh, for letting her know. 
Um, so yeah, if you just head to the link in my profile here on TikTok, it'll take you right to the brushes. There's like a, a link page with all sorts of links on it. <clears throat> Friends, if I missed your question, I haven't answered it yet. I would just suggest asking it again. Sorry to be annoying, but um, when I, when my um, iPad ran out of juice, I missed some questions, I think, when I went away. Just going over top. That just felt a little too golden. Going right over top with the olive. I have not named these colors yet, friends. I am going to need some help with that. I'm going to be doing a TikTok very soon um, because I have to decide on the swatch card. And the swatch card design is going to feature the names that I give the colors. <coughs> so that has to be decided fairly soon. I'm so sorry again for all the coughing. Not sure what's happening, but is what it is. I'm going to use this liner brush and go in. This is a little tricky trick I love to do and just do some like line work kind of detailing to create some of the shapes. It just breaks things up visually to create the same element which in this case is the pomegranate seed but to paint it in kind of a different with a different style, a different approach, a different technique. So that's what we're doing here. Super loosey goosey. Kind of letting the length of this brush and how it bends and curves, letting it, not fighting it, letting it do what it wants to do, letting it determine in, in ways the size of the seed. <clears throat> Isn't that lovely? I am going to have to wrap up here, friends, because I hear my oven dinging and I got to go check on my broccoli and my cauliflower. I'm detoxing today from all the holiday insanity, um, you know, dietary insanity. Isn't that gorgeous? I love these little sketchy organic addition. Oh, I love that. I'm a happy, happy painter right now. Dare I do a little, I'm going to go over here and just do, I noticed that this area is still damp. So I see that as an um, opportunity. Um, another great um, thing to just be aware of as you paint is, is to be aware of what areas of your painting are wet and dry and somewhere in between as you go so that you know, like I know right now this area is damp. So any paint I add right now is going to diffuse very softly. And I was not wrong. And I'm getting just a lovely effect here. And I'm going in with a dry brush, a dry liner brush, and adding with just the, the smidge of blue that is still on my brush, I'm adding some kind of ghostly, whispery details of seeds. And it's just so interesting. <clears throat> to really mix it up in terms of your brush stroke style. I am a fan going into the cap here. I've decided we're gonna call this a cap um, and adding some just small moments of linear detail that are in turn also becoming, look at that instant contrast, so good. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm getting a little realistic here, I'd say. Doesn't take much sometimes. When the when the brush stroke is thoughtful enough, it doesn't take too long to enter into the realm of more overt realism. Because as I've mentioned, I do believe that the style that I'm doing right now is a form of realism. Um, not photorealism but love it oh I love it all right I'm gonna go in here it's still damp but I think it's gonna be damp enough dry enough excuse me 
to add some linear detail. Just using an olive green and whatever's on my brush. I didn't clean my brush. Don't be afraid to go outside the lines, friends. I'm elongating these leaves as I go. I added a little bit of brown to the green. I'm always careful to use brown in with greens, especially for leaves, because I don't want my leaves to look dead, but I think it's working here. <clears throat> I'm going to avoid the urge to do this treatment all on all the leaves, even though I love it. I'm avoiding the urge, as I mentioned before, too much of a good thing. Going in, and I'm changing up um, the pressure on my brush. This is a larger leaf, and I feel like it needs a little more interest to be interesting so creating the veins of this leaf with um, additional pressure especially up here at the top it's a little bit strong so i might go in and soften it with some clean-ish water there we go i'm gonna go over here i love the brown over here so I'm going to cautiously add touches of that over here um, to detail the cap just a touch I don't think it needs a lot oh I'm happy friends I'm happy happy thank you mother of dragons thank you the pug Marco in the tin, what is that extra flap actually for? It, mixing, Jennifer, it's just for mixing. So there's gonna be two large panels still for mixing um, instead of three. So I figured it was a good compromise. I already bought colors to paint, but I need something to encourage me. Well, that's what I'm here for and I'm free here. So I'm, I'm happy to encourage you. <laughs> I'm always afraid to leave alive in case I miss something. I know. All right, friends. Uh, I'm going to peace out. Make sure I don't burn dinner. But this has been such a blast. Make sure you give a follow um, if you haven't already uh, so you don't miss a thing. Lots of fun coming in 2022. Um, and if you don't already subscribe to my YouTube channel, please do because I, I have a ton of longer, sometimes really long, hour plus long um, um videos on there so it's a it's a good companion to what i'm doing here so hit me up with questions i'm here for you i am so encouraged by this community love 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 you so much keep painting paint through the frustration paint with the five minutes that you have whatever you have just paint and you will be more joyful for it i promise happy painting friends take care